I'm here with Mark Wanger of Ridekick. How's it going, Mark? Pretty good. How you doing, Court? I'm good. You, you guys make these cool electric bike trailers, and uh, you know you're a pretty knowledgeable guy. You've studied mechanical, electrical, and software engineering at CSU, UC Santa Barbara, and MIT. You're pretty knowledgeable, so it's it's great to get to talk to you and to share um, some of, some of what you've learned. And today I wanted to ask you about electric bike motors. Okay. Oh, okay. So you know I I understand that you've got. Uh, geared motors. It's like mm, a little mm -hmm. 350 watt geared eight fun motor that people see. It's yeah, like a yeah. hub motor. And then awesome. there's gearless motors. Mm -hmm. And then you've also got some chain driven and some other things. But well, let's talk about application after that. Are the two primary motor types like geared and gearless? Um, yeah, gear and geardless. And one of the things is that motors tend to be a little bit more efficient and higher torque if you can run them at higher speed. Okay. So a uh, hub motor that is not geared is running at a slow RPM, um, so therefore smaller wheels work better because um, they can spin a little bit faster. Hmm. But going through all those commutation steps with the windings and all the things that go along with that, if you can bring up the speed a little bit, you get to a lot more efficiency. So that's why hub motors, there's, there are geared hub motors, and they tend to be advertised as more torque, and they are a little bit more efficient, and they're and so therefore you're not putting nearly as much heat out of them. So in human terms, right, like mm -hmm. if for non-engineers, uh, both geared and gearless motors, they both have gearless motors inside. But, oh, well put. Right, yeah. but with a, yeah. a geared hub motor, what you have is a smaller motor, okay, mm -hmm. and it's spinning fast, and then you're stepping down that high speed using planetary gears that rotate around it. And so right. the motor can operate at that high efficiency we talked about, but you don't have to have as large of a motor. It doesn't have to weigh as much, for example, or take up as much space. Mm -hmm. And the downside of that, however, is that you've got these kind of plastic gears in there. There's a little more complexity, so durability mm -hmm. might might be sacrificed. Am I getting right. that right? Yeah, that's right. And the reason that you'll see those um, direct drive motors get bigger, 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 yeah. because when you can put that, that torque, that power of the magnets on a bigger radius, mm -hmm. you get more torque through the thing. That's like the Bionics has the D series. Yeah, and you've oh, got the beautifully the big, yeah, huge, huge like pizza pie looking thing. Huge. Okay, and then of course with uh, some direct drive motors, they offer regenerative braking. Okay, yes. so how does that work? So um, actually with direct drive motors, um, whether they're brush or brushless or hub motors or not, you can actually run a motor like a generator and get energy back out of it. And so some systems will use that as you're coasting down or if you hit the brakes or some kind of signal goes to the motor system, yeah. they'll use that, that motor to brake it used in hybrid cars it's wonderful <laughs> to recharge the batteries and so you'll see that on some electric bikes but is it wonderful because i hear companies that don't have it i mean you know they're defending mm -hmm. themselves but they're like ah, eh, it's so inefficient and you're getting cogging anyways with these direct drive motors so you're really just breaking even it's not worth the complexity and the price what do you think oh there's pros and cons to those statements and one of them is is that it does add a little complexity um, the benefit is, is that I've heard and I've done actually read some studies that have come out of MIT, alma mater, nice. and that they that you can get about 10%. So if you have a battery that goes 20 miles and you're using regenerative braking and you're doing all the complexities of you know reading the the braking sensor and as opposed to just coasting, and you put that all back in, you're going to go 22 miles instead of 20. Okay. So it's a little bit helpful, depending a little bit on of a the bump. terrain. And you save your your brake pads a little bit too. Yeah, you're you going down a hill. Yeah. Your brake pads don't have to be used quite as much. Okay, good. So we've got some ideas of geared and gearless. We mm -hmm. talked about hub motors a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now they've, they've got mid-drive motors. Um, oh, right. and it seems like one of the advantages there, a lot of times it's still just a geared motor, except mm -hmm. for instead of being inside the, you know, inside of your the hub on your wheel, they mount it in the middle of the bike and then it pulls the chain. And the big advantage is you can use your cassette as... Um, just like a manual transmission in a car, you know? If you're climbing, right. you put it in a low gear. If you're going fast, you put it in a high gear. Yeah, so um, one of the ways I kind of separate it is, is that there's hub motors inside the wheel, mm -hmm. and then there's other motors, I call them a can. They look like a can. Yeah. It's just a spinning motor. Hmm. When you get to a mid-drive motor or the motors that we um, use in our trailer, it's just a can. There's the most reliable, um, you know, well-engineered, historically favorable motor. And poof, you put energy into it and energy comes out. And either you drive a wheel with it, or if you drive the chain mechanism in mid-drive, yeah. then you can use all the gearing on your bike, and it's a wonderful thing for getting up hills or going fast on the flats. So you make a good point. So there are these other motors, one of the advantages of not having them mounted in the wheel is that you reduce that unsprung weight. Okay, and for people right. who don't understand that, that's like, you know, we've got a suspension fork on this bike. The more weight that's in the wheel, the more work this suspension has to do, it's gonna slow it down and, um, 
that's that's not what you want especially if you have a full suspension bike and usually the motor is mounted at the rear so when people say unsprung weight that's what they're talking about you want the wheels to be super light so they can be really responsive and hug the road hug the terrain um, another thing that seems to come up of course is balance like if you have a, a centered motor or in this case with the ride kick their motors are not even on the bike the weight is separated from the bike you're gonna have better handling uh, and speaking of handling you know these bikes have these long spokes which are sort of flexible right and that that's going to improve the ride quality and um, I, I think depending on the length of the spoke and the gauge uh, you know just not brake spokes but when you start having bigger motors and things in there you have to deal with respoking the wheel if there's a problem in the future versus just putting on a, a basic standard wheel so and and also you're limited in terms of quick release so there, there's just so much to say on motors but um, can you tell me a little bit about the stator thing again because we were talking about cogging can you tell me what cogging is and what a mm. stator is and how how the gearless motor works so on all motors there's a magnet let's say we have magnets all the way around so yeah. a magnet and then you have windings uh, windings which carry like it's copper, current, right? copper windings. And so the electrical current goes through there. So as you're going past one magnet to another, you kind of get this thick, 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 thick thing going on. Yeah. And that's when you're powered, but when under power, there's so much energy going through it, you don't feel it. But when on, um, on a hub motor, direct drive hub motor, yeah. you may on some motors feel that as you're going along, you'll feel a th 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 and that is the actual windings going past each magnet feeling like a little bit of generator yeah. motor action <laughs> <laughs> and that happens even when the bike's off because the motor the magnets never turn off and the copper wire is still there and it's sort of repelling and going from notch to notch yeah that's a good explanation of it and you won't feel it in a geared motor with a clutch in it with a one-way clutch a, a free freewheel wheel, yeah because it's not pushing those coils past those motor uh, past the then of course holes. you give up the potential for regenerative braking so yes, exactly. we're full circle so there's the pros other. there's cons it's yeah. great to hear mm -hmm. uh, from an expert on, on the subject someone who has uh, a bike maybe you can tip up yours and show the motor yeah and um, I'll, I'll talk about one thing while we're looking at this and yeah. that is um, underneath here let's see if we can pull this over there's the can that you were talking about there's that, yeah so I call this it a direct can drive. motor direct drive and this is a brush motor versus a brushless motor yeah. both kinds are viable and there's reliability issues with either kind with brush motors people say oh the brushes wear down and true in many in some motors with small brushes they can wear out and then you have to replace them the motors that you can choose may have long brushes which we've chosen and we've got thousands of miles on a brush motor without any problem so at all brush just it takes longer to wear all the way down exactly so imagine this brush running up against this run, run, and this is the brush the right? and that so it gets worn down if you start with just a little bit of a stub of one you can wear it away oh. if you've got a long one as it wears you got plenty of room so we've looked at these brushes after a couple thousand miles and we got plenty of brush left so this is not a reliability issue with some motors people also talk about hall sensors um can you can you comment on that you know what is a hall mm. sensor on a, on a lot of hub motors or brushless motors you need to be able to turn on and off the current as you go past these magnets so that you're pulling into each one yeah and so you can either guess where you are and commutate, i.e. change the current on each one of these things to get to each motor pole by guessing by the speed, or you can put in a hall sensor which senses magnetic field, and that way the hall sensor can tell where you are relative to each one of these magnetic poles, and then you can change your, your current appropriately in timing and you can get better power and better control so instead of measuring speed you're actually measuring where those those windings are yeah where the commutator is relative to the magnet and that way you can power it appropriately so is more hall sensors better um uh, you just need a few yeah. And that way you can know exactly where you are, and but you need to make sure that the connectors are good, that the wires don't break. And so all it's the bigger than that. It's not, it. it's not as straight, yes or no. Yeah. Is it, uh, does it allow you to have more variable speeds with more hall sensors? Because you're... Yeah, if you put in an, um, I think it's three or four. I'm not an expert on this. I'm a hobbyist on, on motors. <laughs> um, but if you put in three or four, I think you can tell exactly where you are on a, on a, um, a motor. And okay. other people, you can look it up on the web and find out exactly what's going on. But when you can get to that level, commutation you can you can be you can do finer control with the current and get better torque and smoother acceleration oh. and more efficiency so the feedback loop is, is helpful this is awesome yeah thank mm -hmm. you so much mark i appreciate uh you answering these questions and you've got a cool product that 
Um, it looks funny you know, sideways. Kinda, yeah, that's not how it's supposed to be. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> there you go.